to week one of the LEC Summer Split. Uh, sometimes after a game like that, you think it's like week six. But <laughs> it was definitely week one. And in the end, Rogue won. And I think a lot of people will be happy to hear that the Kia player of the game turned out to be Vander with 61% of the votes. And they're doing a fan meet right now as well. Are we happy about, happy that? about that? I mean, think about how rewarding oh. it must feel for Rogue to finally kind of get their foot back onto the board right now. They uh, made the adjustments. They brought in the new roster. They had experimented with bringing Vander onto the team. They looked much more decisive. And so it must just feel like a good payoff. We made the right choice here. Yeah, and you can only beat what's in front of you. And I think this is one that they absolutely had to win. And yep. I think you voted for them as well. No, I... Oh, so <laughs> sorry, that was... We my, both uh, jump ship. <laughs> yeah, I jump ship after a day of games. Probably... I'm sorry, <laughs> Vander. I'm yeah. sorry. But uh, we'll see how their growth continues throughout the split. I think right now they're still a little too slow for my liking. I think the game is very fast-paced right now. So they need to pick up the pace if they want to keep up with the rest of the team. Let's keep track of how they evolve. But coming up next, though, we've got SK Gaming taking on Schalke Null Fear, the battle of the two German teams. That is now yesterday, SK Gaming, the rookies, they took on Fnatic, and it wasn't pretty, unfortunately. Not the warmest welcome back to the LEC. Uh, they got crushed. So what didn't go right for them? So one of the biggest things was, I believe, they also picked the Azir, and then they also got shut down in mid Correct. And I feel like that a lot of the issues were kind of stemmed from the fact that they didn't have the same mid-jungle synergy that Fnatic had coming into that game. And I was very surprised because I was expecting Selfmade to be rookie of the split Selfmade, you know, where he popped off at the beginning of the split and it was all about how he was finding all these early game plays. He was on the job and I had high expectations of him and he was invisible. It felt like that he didn't even try to have any kind of impact that he did last split. Yeah, I think about like 60 minutes in the game, he was sitting 0-0-0 zero, zero, and zero on the likes of the Jarvan. So just kind of a completely different look from him. That said, hard reset, shake it off, go into this game, find that gank potential because that's where SK really thrive. It's in those team fights and bringing CC to multiple ends. And here we see it. That is exactly what he did in the spring split and why he also earned rookie of the split. The fact that he can take this games and be very active in the early game and put his team on the front foot. That wasn't the case. So I don't think we need to despair too much because we know that he can do this just very shortly. What do we think of Sakurai in his first game? Kind I don't of think invisible. Sort of thing. <laughs> yeah. But that's uh, the thing. He should be a carry oriented to top laner. It should just be self-made and Sakurai just yeah, this, moving together. This this. All right, that's what we want to see today from SK Gaming. Well, they're up versus Schalke Null Fear. And of course, the big headline for Schalke coming into the summer split was the return of Trick and Trick being introduced to that roster. And I know you guys don't agree completely. <laughs> Frost think he did amazing. Vedius says he didn't do Vettius anything. So which one is it? We had a fight. There was a couple <laughs> of fists thrown. It's fine, Trick. I'm on your side. I loved what you did. I loved your river control. Um, and I just love the direction that you bring to this team, especially in that cocoon right there. Ultimately, you were so why you won the game. So only the river control in that cocoon? I just thought his early game was good. Vettius, I know you have a different perspective on it. I just think that uh, with the tools that he had, he could have done a lot more. Perhaps my standards uh, of Trick are a little bit higher. Maybe Two-time MVP two Trick? Yeah, like, but I think that with the tools that he had, I think that he didn't make much of them. Uh, and like, when we saw yesterday, like how the early game played out, I don't know. I just, I guess, I wasn't that impressed. So I like, I'm still keeping my eyes on Trick. I think that he has still fundamentally helped the team, um, but this so far, I haven't been blown away. This is awesome because last time he was here, those screens weren't there. So he, he <laughs> so has never like, seen oh, himself uh, 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 larger than my life. My favorite was like him. upset, twisting in his chair. He's like, that's not me. There you go. Upset and Oduwamna yesterday both commenting on the fact that Trick is bringing some much needed guidance to the lineup. So we'll see if that translates into a win for Schalke once again. We'll very soon find out if Trick can lead Schalke to a 2-0 and zero week as we leave it over to Quickshot and Ender. Thank you very much, Sharks. That's right. Can Trick do it, or will it be Sacre and self-made? Yeah, you know, for me, for me, it's all about the jungle position. That one's for you, Frost, uh, because self-made was the guy that carried SK to playoffs in last season, and now for Schalke, they bring in Trick, who already I saw bringing a lot of structure and shot calling to this team. And of course, we heard Upset talking about him yesterday, saying he actually thinks Trick is currently quite underrated. He had a good performance. I'm going to put you on the spot after one game apiece, who is the better jungler? 
just one game, I'm gonna say Trick. I actually okay. thought his early game pathing was really, really cool, how he was able to track the enemy jungler and work to, to set his team up for success, whereas Selfmade yesterday was a little bit invisible, but I do expect Selfmade to bounce back and have a lot higher of an impact moving forward. All right, let's take a look at the draft. Of course, yesterday, uh, the Jarvin for Selfmade did not go particularly well. Elise on the side of Shalka. Trick wasn't able to get too many early kills, but he found the crucial cocoons later in the game, and we saw his stats a moment or two ago, and instantly out the gate, Yumi and Olaf taken away. I mean, Yumi has a 0% win rate. I'm not sure why we're banning her, guys. <laughs> uh, at least taken away as well. What I like about this, all of our pregame was focused around the junglers. We believe the jungler uh, role in this matchup is going to be pivotal. And the first two bands out of SK Gaming is targeting the junglers. Yeah, so what do we have left? We have Jarvan, we have uh, Sejuani, and we have uh, the Rek'Sai, yeah. I think, would be the, the most powerful options here for SK. I think if you ban this many junglers, if you go for a third one especially, you are going to be looking to lock one in right off the bat. We know Selfmade loves that Rek'Sai. While he has different view in terms of item builds for the champion, that is certainly one that he could use to snowball his team. Yeah, definitely going to be the case. And Aatrox is the next ban here from Shalka. One ban a piece left. What are some of the power picks that you could consider? Zaya is now taking out the pool. The bans from the last time we saw professional play to now is very, very different, but the prior picks are still up there. Yeah, well, we still have Aurelia and Silas up and available. Aurelia has been one that's been consistently banned, you know, picked maybe once or twice yesterday, but 100% uh, present so far in the LEC here. So if that one does slip through, maybe SK don't want to go for a jungler right off of that because we still do feel like there are two power pick junglers available. They could go for that Aurelia. All right, so... I mean, it's difficult to choose, but when you invested jungle bands, it makes me think they want to prioritize that role. Um, get that off the table early and not give Trick his preferred option. And of course, if Sejuani does get locked in, which I think it might, something we've seen in some of the leagues is, of course, that opens up the Camille. We got to cast it yesterday. Talk about how strong that mid jungle duo can be if. Pyrian wants to go that direction. Yeah, it's interesting because Pyrian, I, I think about him and I wouldn't associate him with the nope. Camille necessarily. You know, he is much more about controlling mid lane. I think Lissandra was a very popular champion for him during last split. And he's, he's a relatively quiet player. You know, he plays to get pressure and then work with self-made to collapse on his side lanes. But very rarely is he ever the star for this team. That being said, I do think he is a very strong fundamental player and a key component as to why SK did make playoffs last split. Well, that Aurelia you talked about was available. is now picked up on the side of Shelka, or in the hands of Abudage or Odawamne. If they lock in the rise, they can obviously flex that, but it will depend on what SK Gaming decides to lock in. And solo lane is this early on, that's a little different, but guaranteeing you get the power picks. I mean, there's so many power picks, yeah. why not go for them? So I think that is a very strong one-two punch to go for early on. Then you can maybe hide a pick. I think you go for jungler next year if you are Shalka, but you can guarantee Upset and Ignore have a good bot lane later on in this draft. Now for SK Gaming, they have the Silas paired with the Sejuani. I think that is a very strong combination because of, you know, you add in a couple melee champions alongside the Sejuani, it really opens her up to have a higher impact gank before she hits level six. Well, how about a Renekton and a Silas? Boom. Solo lane is locked in for both sides. I'm expecting, anyways. Um, can't deny the fact that you can still flex to the bottom lane. I wouldn't anticipate it with upset. You've got those solos. Uh, melee solo lane is combined with Sejuani, so a lot of kill pressure, a lot of damage wherever Selfmade wants to go play. And it's going to be the Trundle response. Do you expect this to be support? No, I'm thinking this is actually jungle here okay. for Trick. You know, when, when Trundle was back in meta, it was mainly as a counter pick to Sejuani. Of course, he had been nerfed quite significantly since then, but his pillar is still a very strong tool in terms of the CC it provides. The slow is still pretty massive on that ability. And of course, once he gets his ultimate, you just rip through the resistances of Sejuani. She's going to have the aftershock or passive bonus inflated. If you pop the R when those two are on for her, you can actually make her go into negative armor and MR, which is just brutal for a frontline tank. It's gonna, and combine that then with Irelia and Rise to kill anything that has had its uh, stats subjugated. Very, very powerful turnaround into ban phase two. Alistair and Callista taken off the table, so that Alistair would potentially have been a threat if Siva was an option that you were considering. Siva could do very well into this likes of 
Trundle Rise, Irelia Comp, and it's actually banned away now. So denying that option from Shelka, and they've got to decide whether they go now support or bot laner. To me, it's Ezreal or Kai'Sa here for upset. If they wait a little bit longer, they can decide what he wants to take here. I think they have a lot of strong pick tools right now. When you have the, the Trundle Pillar, that is a very long range spell that can boot people out of position and set up for skill shots like the Zest Sentence from this Thresh. So I think that is an interesting combo to try and throw out here. All right, so it's going to be the Thresh, as you mentioned. And again, just a lot of tools, very versatile champions, really, and very versatile in all periods of the game. Ezreal being one of the champions that you anticipated could go the way of upset is now stolen by Crown Shot. So he, he'll have some flexibility, some self-peel options if his you know, top half of the map decides to go in. And obviously with Braum, you got a fairly defensive bottom lane, probably a self-sufficient. They might get left alone for a while, I think. Yeah, that's typical, typically what you see here. And Crown Shot does certainly love his Ezreal as well as Upset. So it's a double steal right there. He gets the champ he is very comfortable on while denying that one from Upset. And I think looking holistically at SK Gaming's comp, they have a lot of tools to play around the top side of the map in the early game, where Shalka may be trying a little bit different. All right, the final lock in there once Ignor secured Vayne. He was giving just a small shout out to his Misfits days, the Blitzcrank, as well as the Leona up against SKT. Thank you for that memory. Um, now we've got the two team comps locked in. Got a lot of options, a, a lot of side lane threats and pressure on the side of Shelka. And they've got themselves the ability to get a lot of picks in any skirmishes. But the same is true when you combine Sitch, Silas, Sitch, Renekton. They can do the same in their side lane. Yeah, I think SK actually have a lot of power in their soul lanes in their respective 1v1s. You know, Renekton should be winning out up against Aurelia later on. The, the same could be said. Silas into Rise, I think, is a pretty good matchup uh, on neutral footing between these two champions. So it will be interesting to see how Trick can play through this early game to try and maybe offset some of that scaling that these soul lanes for SK might have an advantage in the 1v1. So what is it that makes uh, Renekton do well into Aurelia later in the stages of the game? Oh, basically, his ultimate is a really big source of power. I think Aurelia's, her ult is balanced more around hitting multiple targets, and she has a better team fight output than her Nectin would have, perhaps. She's also a little bit less reliable in her CC. With her E, you know, the double blades for the stun, she has to land that. That's a skill shot, whereas her Nectin can dodge that. His son is instant. It's an yeah. auto attack CC, so it's a lot more reliable from that Renekton. Ooh, I really hope we get to see the 1v1 going down. Odawamne playing the Irelia, and Sacre playing the Renekton. I want to talk a little bit about that player once we get into game because you had the pleasure of actually casting him over at EU Masters. And as it stands, it's Shulka vs SK. Welcome back to the Rift here on day two of the summer split in the LEC. And I want to turn our attention to the players that we spent a lot of time talking about in the pregame. It is self-made and it's trick, Sejuani into Trundle. Uh, what should expectations be during the early stages of this game and, and sort of pathing options because there is so much potential to get kills in every lane if anybody just steps a little bit out of place. Yeah, so I think speaking about early game, you know, gank paths for both these junglers, they both have really good options, you know. You look across every single lane, there is CC to set it up. Uh, Trundle, of course, will bring more damage to early game fights, but Sejuani has more CC, so I think uh, both these champs have very good options, but the key difference is going to be when they meet up. So in a 1v1 or any sort of 2v2, if there's a counter gank situation, I would give the advantage to Trix Trundle because of the damage it can bring up against the Sejuani. And of course, the fact that he steals so many statistics as well, you know. Chomp is going to be so valuable. Yep. Gets an additional attack speed from the Frozen Domain. He's definitely one of the more frustrating champions to deal with 1v1. Uh, and also that pillar can be game-changing. I saw some very, very crucial pillars of ice interrupting mobility or really preventing escape paths. So that can be very important as the game plays out. And Crown Shot and Dreams will return to lane just a little later than Upset and Ignar. And they're going to be in, in time to pick up most of the 
wave as well as all the experience. Yeah, we actually saw Ignar do the same poll that we saw yesterday, uh, where you actually draw the minion aggro and then walk it into the bush to get the lane a little bit more favorable position where you can have your support play aggressively in that second brush. Uh, of course, now Ignar gets pushed out a little bit, but Shalko will have the first uh, level two coming in, which means that once that gets taken down, they need those melee minions, they will have the advantage and can push Crownshot away. You see the respect. Crownshot and Dreams instantly back away the moment they realize that Ignar's going to get access to his second spell. Pyrian with the early ward there behind the chicken camp. Let's step forward and just get some information. This will tell you a lot about where Trick is and what he's doing on the minimap. He's heading to blue. Yeah, you saw SK actually putting two wards inside of Trick's jungle first. I believe it was Sakura that warded over that Baron wall to see if there was going to be a level two gank up top lane because that is one thing that a trundle can do. If you take the pillar as your second ability, uh, you can go for a very early game gank to try and shut down that Renekton, but they didn't see him there. So Pyrian said maybe he's on the Raptors. Once he puts down that ward and they see he's not, it's pretty safe to assume at this point that he has path down bot. All right, what about Trick? Got press the attack, got himself the machete to start off. Very, very healthy clear on the first. Of course, didn't go into the chickens just yet. We'll clear out the wolf camp, and then we start seeing where does self-made and Trick go? And who's going to get the early advantage? Yeah, I think Selfmade just wants to hover around the top side of the map for the time being. You know, take this Scuttle Crab. If you can then walk in and contest the Raptors, uh, that may be a good option. But this ward will end up seeing Trick if he does walk in for that camp. Instead, he's actually looping all the way around. And this was the idea that I was talking about, about using the Trundle Pillar to find an early game gank up top lane. Trick maybe expects either a dive from Selfmade or the opportunity for a gank. All right, let's take a look. Perian, can he get this gun? Is going to find one, gets the second. That's a double stun. Defensive Ooh. flash from Abadagi, but he escapes with his life. All right, just barely getting the phase rush in there as well to scoot on out of there. Abadage, he's been bullied so much. Think back to the spring split of last year. Junglers always coming into this man's lane and shutting him down. So it's nice to see him get away for once. Oh, man, being picked on and really a challenging start to the game. Uh, but flashless, he's going to be able to teleport back to lane as it stands. He's going to try to get this wave potentially to bounce. It looks like it's pushing towards Pyrian, but you can see Trick waiting in the wings. And if Selfmade can find a return gank, this is good. Selfmade, we've heard the word several times, invisible yesterday in the early game. Definitely not invisible in the first five minutes. Yeah, and especially because you get that gank before level six is coming. So now there's no flash on Abadagi. Give it two minutes, Selfmade's going to be level six, and then he comes mid lane. Well, this Rice doesn't have a flash. He opted into teleport instead of cleanse. So that means that should be a very easy kill unless Trick shows up. If Trick can counter gank, that is where Shalku can maybe turn it around. All right, let's take a look at the trade here. Pyrian gets uh, caught and eats a lot of damage from those overloads. But you mentioned when Trick shows up, like, what is the 2v2 here? It feels like more damage on the side of Shalka, so uh, in theory, if they get you locked down with that Rune Prison and Pillar, they should be able to win it out. Yeah, I mean, I think SK have a lot of burst damage when they go in for these types of trades, especially around the mid lane where, you know, Silas lo lays down all his cooldowns, which are relatively high, especially early on in the game. Uh, Sejuani has her stun, which comes in immediately, but then in an extended trade, the Trundle's going to be able to do a lot. The Rise, of course, as well, should be able to fire back effectively. Yeah, definitely going to be the case, and Trick is still, he's just, you know, lingering around the mid lane. Obviously not a lot of camps to clear if you look at the minimap, so he's going to spend his time warding his flashless mid laner. While that's going on, the top laner has been shoved in. Uh, Sakura was able to get a small advantage, while Oda Wamne is still sitting in lane, and the first back will be a phage for Sakura. He's not going to use the TP to come back up. He had the advantage of uh, backing first, and Odo. We'll see what he can do if he decides to shove, back shop, then come back. Yeah, and my experience with Sakura is this man just always has an advantage because when I was watching him play at EU Masters, he averaged a plus 25.2 CS differential at just 15 minutes. That is gigantic. I know you know, you're the stats master. That is massive. Yeah, it, it really was insane. And and back in the day, he, he got a lot of range top laners. That was always sort of his bread and butter, but it was always about having a very lane dominant style. You come into the LEC, of course, the level of competition does rise, but I still expect this guy to play that same style. Well, self-made, I think it just snuck in. Odo will spot that one, and obviously self-made is... We're not going to go in for the fight just yet. Odo realizes something's fishy. He is step back instantly. Yeah, when you see the Sejuani mark on yes. the cannon creep. Yes. So Odo knows something's up, but he's not going overextended. And what I was going to say is expectation. Can Sakura go up plus 20 CS 
against Odo Zarelia. Yeah, Selfmade is really sitting this one out right here. Of course, he has the ultimate, but Odo does have the flash. If he can react, he can dodge it. All right, there's the flash. Odo was trying to bait that one out and actually ends up coming away worse for wear. I actually really don't like this gank from Selfmade. In theory, it, it can be nice, but ultimately I was expecting to see him come to that mid lane. There's no flash on Abadagi. Abadagi is pushing up. Selfmade should just look to control vision around one side of this mid lane and then force that play. It's a very easy gank to lay down. I think it's a missed opportunity now that his ult is on cooldown. On the same token, Selfmade at least making those plays. This is an improvement from yesterday. I can see him, yeah. that's for certain. Albeit uh, not the strongest, he's got two flash from two ganks. That means Abedages is still on cooldown. 25% of the uh, cooldown remaining. He's not going to be under pressure just yet. And we haven't actually looked at these bottom lanes at all in, in quite a bit of time. Um, 15 CS advantage for now. Upset and Ignore. Remember, they had the early level two and they've been able to keep the pressure up, but there is a very large number of minions pushing towards crown shots, so it will close that gap somewhat. It'll close the gap, but Upset will certainly be ahead in this lane. We saw it just from the start of the laning phase as well, where they you know, pulled that wave into the bush, got the earlier level two, and were constantly pushing up. And because there hasn't been any jungler involvement around this bottom lane, it has just been Upset and Ignar applying the pressure, and they're very close to getting the first plate in that bottom lane as well. This kind of benefits Shalka. I mean, Upset on Vayne, you have to feel more confident confident in versus crown shot on Ezreal. Uh, you mentioned one thing about the jungler involvement. I've actually got the jungle proximity stats from yesterday, where Selfmade actually spent 49.9% of his time in the early game around his laners, despite having no impact. Trick, on the other hand, five, roughly four, four percentage points less. You look at his game this time around, and it's very similar. He's just been power farming. He's pretty much ignored everything. But his laners haven't needed the help and haven't been under pressure, so you can't fault him for that. Yeah, and what we have seen him doing is actually shading his laners at times where they could be ganked, whether it was pathing top lane and sacrificing maybe his Raptor camp in order to protect from a potential dive when that wave was collapsing. So I think it's pretty obvious here that Trick is a smart player and that he is trying to figure out where Selfmate is on the map. Even without the vision, he's trying to put together that mental picture and placing himself on the map where he thinks is best. Yeah, right now, Trick and Selfmate reading the same situation. They're both in play. Selfmate's got the ulti available. Abadaga's gonna flash away from it. Trick is in trouble. He's taken so much damage from Period, but they've turned around. Subjugate flash forward for Trump is not enough. First blood picked up by Selfmate. True Shot Barrage comes in for extra measure, and Selfmate greater than Trick. Really nicely played there from Selfmate. I need some more time to maybe figure <laughs> that one out for certain. But he saw him on the ward in that brush. So Selfmate had the counter gank. It meant that Salka used all their cooldowns to try and find Period, who was able to use his flash to get away. Now Oh, he's in trouble though. Flash play, death sentence will not matter despite it missing. Ignar's Ignite picks up the kill. And that's a one for one in the mid lane. All right, so Ignar gonna come in clutch to make things right here for Shalka. The gold gonna be all evened up. We'll check this out from the perspective of Selfmade. Again, he saw Trick on that ward. He waits until they fully commit in here. Flash ultimate doesn't connect, but now he has fight. We have to jump out. Odo Omne forced to run for his life. Double blink as Trick is now looking for Selfmade once again. Revenge secured. Trick's gonna be able to chop one more time before he goes down himself. Now Sakrik trying to escape with a second dice. It will not do it. Yeah, teleport advantage there on Abadagi, so he's able to make his way up into the top lane and punish that of SK. This game went from very slow to very, very quick. As soon as some summoner spells got burnt there, both junglers just felt completely activated to go for some plays. And there we go, three kills to two. In the matter of 60 seconds, five kills secured in the mid and top lane. And of course, it was Ignar's Rome that got Shalker on the board and then Trick comboed with his solo laners for two additional. It's a 500 gold lead to Shalker and still a very close, very even game. Yeah, it is. And right now they are going to have some advantages. Top lane teleport from Sakurai just went back into the top lane. So Odo will have that advantage. Now we see how this one starts out. Again, it's SK going all in, but this is what I said. Unless you can instantly burst down and win the fight, you will get out damaged in these longer team fights. Odo survives, so now Trick is able to trade back and get a lot of damage down on Sejuan. There was such good usage of the marks. Multiple blade surges from Odo to avoid and stay just out of melee range. Yeah, and it also gives the extra healing as mid. Every time we come out of a replay, there's a fight. Abadage still stays alive. He's running away. The realm will won't be enough, and they get the rest of his team out. Abadage, Whoa. first Atlantic. How are you still alive? How 
How does Shulker get away with that? The Death Sentence connects with Dreams and Silver Bolts will get procced, but they don't chase further. Oh, that was beautiful! That was so insane. Abadagi puts down the Realm Warp, but he knows if he gets CC'd, it's cancelled. So he says, I'm going to sacrifice him myself. Ignar's like, no, wait, look at this. I've got a Lantern, come on out with me, and Shulker get away with murder. Man, the setup on the Realm Warp for the rest of Shulker to escape, and I was just about to be very critical of Abadawi oh, yeah. stepping forward, and Ignor saves the day, so nobody died in that exchange, but it was very fun to watch. Yeah, Abadawi has been flirting with that death this entire game, but somehow, some way, he's able to get out every single time. I mean, his flashes were really on point in multiple exchanges earlier, getting out of range of the 2v1, getting uh, uh, staying alive in the 2v2. He's 1-0-1 one, one on Rise, still working towards his first big upgrade, Whereas Perian has already got that proto belt completed. Actually, you know, first big items coming in for a few members of SK. Um, Black Cleaver secured for Sacre, Man Immune, and the Sheen for Crown Shot. So we're still scaling up, we're still ramping up as we're close to 15 minutes. Yeah, we are. And we're actually seeing an interesting map state at the moment, too, where both AD carries are left solo down towards the bottom lane. And as the pace of the game seems to be picking up a little bit, it is worth noting that Crown Shot elected for the teleport on the Ezreal, which is up, whereas Upset went for the, the cleanse. So that's going to be much more effective when a Sejuani is jumping on you, perhaps. But in the event that, say, a Rift Herald is started up, Upset has to move all the way up there. Otherwise, Crown Shot has the opportunity to TP and get a 5v4. I also think that the, that cleanse with the amount of hard CC in the composition for SK. Very small call. I wonder if it also allows Upset a little bit more strength in the side lanes if he ever finds himself in a 1v1. Time will tell because the Rift Herald has now been picked up by Trick. He's got no flash available, but the Lantern from Ignar is flawless. And Shalka didn't panic. They didn't want the fight. They got the objective. And it's smart shot calling from them too, right? Upset has the advantage in the 1v1 between both AD carries. So he pushes down bottom lane and then makes the long trek through the river up towards that top side of the map. So if a fight were to break out, they could match it. Instead, they say we can still just use this lantern to get Trick out to safety. And they get the objective for free. All right, nicely done. Upset, he tumbles forward. Maybe he realizes a vision in the river there. So. Doesn't want to continue the chase, despite maybe being able to do so after throwing the Cutlass active down. And Trick will just escape thanks to the Frozen Domain. Challenge of a Mountain Drake Vision. Yeah, I think Shalka right now would really love to get a fight going. Odo's going for a base to get his mana back, and then he can maybe look for a TP down in towards that bottom lane. Right now it's SK with control, but that could turn on a dime the second Odo uses that spell. All right, item disparity here. Odo's obviously got the boots, the Tiamat versus the completed Black Cleaver. Sakurai looking to either cut the wave or just prevent his exit. And the Dragon's going to get started by SK Gaming. Shalko ready, though. They're aware of it. Yeah, SK are bringing down Sakurai, so he's going to be running into the area, but he will not get here quick. All right, Subjugate is stolen by Pyrian. Very good arc and shift over the wall. Gets Crown Shot to safety. Dreams is sitting inside the pit, waiting for Stan behind me. True Shot Barrage does several hundred damage to multiple members of Shalka. Teleports up for Odo. He hasn't used it yet. Yeah, here we go. They're going for the engage. That's the engage. It's already done. That's the first kill on the trick. The Mountain Drake will reset and the teleport completes. Instant reply onto Pyrian. Mid for jungles, a good trade for Shelka, but the re-engage from Sakura. The slice and dice, he can't cut anybody up. Nice. Sakura gets shut down by the Silver Bolt, and he has the Realm Warp. They're not done. That's so far, they're going back in. It's another kill. Crown Shot now being jumped on by Upset. He doesn't stand a chance. That's it. Double kill for Upset. Beautiful stuff there from Shalka, using their teleports to come in for that fight around the dragon. Ignar still trying to find out where Self Made is in the jungle, but it's a clean wipe for Shalka. All right, the Mount Mountain Drake didn't go down in the entire exchange, but Shalka just showing up in the team fight, losing Trick and I think getting three or four at the end of it. Yeah, and we heard Upset last night on PGL talking about how much Trick brought to the team, not just in terms of an individual player, but shot calling and, and comms for this team. And you can see it very evident right there, the multi-step process, how they set up for that Drake and eventually called Odo in for that TP, made it so they could play that fight very intelligently. All right, we're actually going to get a replay of this, and it's going to be started as Odo's in the base. Yeah, you can see Trick gets burst basically right off the bat. And Pyrene, he stole the Subjugate, so he's trying to be tanky, but it's not enough. He was just able to use that on towards Ignar. Now, with all four members still alive, Sakurai goes in, but he doesn't find the stun on towards Abadage. This is where they realize the front line is down. Abadage can then use the Realm War to transport all four members into the fight and pick up the final kills. Really, really good usage of that Realm War. Abadage was under so much pressure. Pressure early in the game, 
He's 1-0-5 on his rise right now, and despite Trick being 1-3 and 2, he has been shadowing when the pressure has been on. And despite Selfmate's attempts to get his laners ahead, it hasn't equated into a lead in Shalka. They're up 2,000 gold right now. In a very, very comfortable position, especially because you consider having all these range threats of a rise and a vein approaching, you know, mid game to late game team fights. That is going to look very good for this Shalka squad. They even get the extra charge yeah. on the Herald as well as icing on the cake. Double boop. Shalka were able to get the first tower in the bottom lane and 30, 40% of that tower on the inner lane. And as it stands, another potential fight. This time, TP is up for Sakura in the top. And another very well placed lantern from Ignar manages to get Abadaga to safety. So this time it's Pyrian splitting top lane with the teleport. Oduwame doesn't have the TP himself, so now yeah. he is on the walk down, but he will be late. Shalka still might want to go for the steal. All right, four versus four. Death Sentence will connect, and it's not going to be followed up by Ignar. The Mountain Drake is secured. Crown it's shot. actually SK to pick it up. Crown Shot was the one that secured. Now Shalka on the disengage. They've got a blast going if they need it. The Vanguard's edge absolutely whiffs and finds nobody. Sakre is being hammered on. Upset stays alive for so, so long. All of a sudden, SK in what was a 5v4. They're losing the fight. Sakre hops over the wall. The flay was great. The Realm Warp will deliver Shalka. They want more. They're going four members in on the Realm Warp one more time. Selfmate gets out, though. Yeah, but look at the minimap. Recall. Teleport's actually being used here by Crown Shot. Perian's going to be the next one that's in trouble. Now the teleport being used from Sakra. Double TP after losing the team fight. And Perian is taking Shalka on a wild goose chase. Yeah, but Perian will fall down eventually. He will not be able to get the execute either. Trick has spotted him, and they're going to donate the kill to Upset. Oh, absolutely the case. Upset 3-0. 2 already. He's going to take some second. damage. Will there be a counter kill? No. That was a little close. Oh my word, Shulka, that fight was so clean. At the start, I had no faith. I was thinking, what are you doing? Just send Trick in there, go for a steal, if anything. But the way Ignar waited on the other side of blue buff to pull Trick out of that situation was just beautiful. Watch this approach into the pit, because again, it's four versus five, but Ignar uses the sweeper. He knows he's not on vision. He, he throws out the, the hook, but then backs away, away from the rest of his team, knowing that if Shulka can kite back and force SK into this position, Ignar then has the flank. He uses the lantern to bring a second member over. Aureli is also on the move down, so the only exit for SK is through the Dragon Pit. That means they have to use Flash, they have to use dashes, but Shalka still have the response of the Realm Warp to eventually close the gap and cut off the rest of SK. So nicely done. I'm really enjoying Shalka's usage of the Realm Warp to finish in close fights as we use creatively, both on the front foot and the back foot. And despite all the damage that Pyrian got out, he wasn't able to find the kill onto Ignar, despite it getting so, so close. Yeah, you, you see Trick there walking over towards the Gromp. Canvy's like, you guys got this, right? And ends up being a little bit close for comfort. All right, so it's a 3,000 gold lead to Shalka. Uh, upset, sort of the star of that fight, uh, closing it out after the re-engage. Not really getting jumped on, he's 4-0-2. He has yet to ever die on Vayne in his career. Ask me how many times he's played Vayne in his career. How many times he's... Twice, yesterday and today. He went 6-0-8, and right now he's 4-0-2. I didn't even finish the question. I know it didn't. I just wanted to set it up myself. Uh, but it's just, it's a really good performance, really confident start to the summer split. And despite it being slow yesterday, I do not have the same feelings today. A lot more in your face, a lot more proactive, and a much stronger lead earlier in the game. Yeah, I think the whole bot lane here for Shock has done so well so far in this match. You know, yeah, Upset's got all the kills, but I think Ignar had some clutch roams to the mid lane yeah. early on. They were winning that two versus two, and in the last team fight, I already mentioned how impressed I was by the, the crafting of that five versus five to get that position and find that perfect flank. It's just been a, a really nice game to watch here from Shock, I feel. Yeah, absolutely the case. Rageblade picked up now for upset. Um, Serax has been with Abadage for a little moment. Triforce for Oduwamne. And of course, Trinity Force equaled by Crown Shot. Uh, no real big purchases yet for Perrin. He's been sitting on that proto belt for a while and hasn't yet been able to find his next big item until this very second. Luden's Echo. That's a small additional power spike. Now, because SK are behind in gold, 
They still have some very good team fight. They still have the ability to win, but how do they claw themselves back into this game? Well, SK have tools to play, I think, skirmishes very well, you know, especially if you can get an isolated, you know, 2v2, 3v3 with champions like Renekton or Silas, you're going to perform very well. Both those champions have high single target damage as well as sustain in their kits to make those types of fights very good. But in the 5v5, what they lack compared to Shalka is range, the range of a vein to rise to pump out DPS from relative safety. Uh, so that is where they might struggle. And if they can try to divide up the map a little bit and take and maybe take a 5v5, split it down the middle, that might be better for them. I get that. If they pick the right fights, their composition can steamroll. Sure. But if you get caught in open terrain, it can go south real fast. Uh, I just saw the little uh, interaction there between Trick and Ignar. <coughs> Excuse me. Pillar of Ice went up. I do have a cough button, but I just forgot to hit it. Um, Pillar of Ice went up, and Ignar was looking for a death sentence, but a target didn't present himself. So I want to see whether or not any of these sieges under tower will be ended by a great combination there. Look, Trick and Ignar again sitting on the front line. Yeah, that really is the combination. You can use the terrain. Now watch Selfmade over on the side. Maybe he wants to find the fight, but they would have to catch up set. And they're not going to find Ooh, it. Oh, there's so much damage onto Abadage. Selfmade wasn't able to get over the wall. Vanguard's edge was stolen by Pyrian, and it's on cooldown. One third already through. Yeah, Abadage has to go back to base to TP back in because Infernal Drake had just spawned. SK can start that up first, but they know they will not have the clean five versus four because of the TP coming in from the rise. Man, just, it's so tentative. Abadage was poked up by just a few spells. Teleport is coming down into the bottom lane. Odo steps into the pit, but he's too late. Shalka may be trying to find a fight right here, but I don't think they're going to get what they want. Oh, SK can be. They've stepped all the way forward. That thank God, they're just fantastic from Odo one day. It's oh, we got him. So many. All of a sudden, Croucher is already dead. They've already traded one for one though, as now Selfmade goes further. The Realm Warp used again, this time to deliver Ignar as well as Abadage chasing onto Pyrian. This is just so sick from Shaka. Flash forward into the root from Abadage. He's looking for more. All right, Infernal Drake goes to SK, but at the cost of two additional kills. And now Shelka, they peel for Baron. Yeah, there's no jungler up now for SK Gaming. It's just Pyrian and Sakurai, but Sakurai is still stuck in the base. Shaka going to tear through this with the true damage from Vayne. All right, Teleport is up for Crown Shot, True Shot Barrage will be by the time he spawns. I don't know if Baron will be alive though. Sakurai's making his way up. Pyrian has got himself a box and Upset is zoning him out. This should go the way of Shalka. Pyrian stepping forward. He's going to almost take out Upset. Oh! True Shot Barrage comes in very, very close. Won't secure the kill. Won't secure more. And despite Sakurai getting a kill onto Upset, it looks like Shalka have got the objective. They're running for their lives. But SK got everything they wanted because Upset died on his vein. All right, but here comes Oduwamne. First death ever on Vayne for Upset. Crown Shot will avoid the flawless duet, but he won't do any more. And after SK got a little bit split on what to do, they don't get any exit kills, and Shalka keep the Baron on a few of the team. Yeah, SK now need to go into damage control and get back some gold on the map. Shalka are forced to recall. Those recalls were a bit delayed by the push there from SK. So they do get this outer turret that will even up the gold just a little bit, but this game is getting into a difficult position now that Shalka can split up the map with this Baron and Siege. Yeah, especially when they've got a Rise and Irelia and a vein. There's so many options on how they can play their lane assignments or put their lane assignments. Just before that tower fell in the mid lane, Ignor did a very cheeky play that I love seeing Threshers do with a fake support by throwing the lantern backwards. Nobody was yep. there. Nobody was around. Nobody was coming in. But you just threaten it. You add that psychological pressure to your opponents. And despite Shalka losing mid, with the help of Baron and Powered Minions, they get an instant reply back. Three towers to three. 4,000 gold lead for Shalka. Well, watch this from the perspective now of Upset. They get into this corridor right here, and I think that Upset just has to free farm. I thought actually Oda was the real hero of this team by diving into the back lane where Upset comes in at the end to pick up some extra kills. But notice here, he doesn't go in through the Realm Warp. He gets the kill and then says, I can actually go back and help out Trick and chase down this Renekton. And of course, he just wasn't under pressure at all. You know, watching from the perspective of Upset, once the initial sort of, you know, uh, uh, fight began, Nobody from SK had a chance to even jump onto him, as you mentioned, because Odo did such a good job jumping in. He got the Vanguard's edge of, I think, three or four people. And that allowed Shalka. They're up 13 kills to five. And now they can play the side lanes. Look, Odo Omni is down in the bottom lane. Abadag is up top, and as it stands, upset Nigna on the mid. Yeah, this is actually a situation where Shalka have all the power, but SK, oh, Ooh. he doesn't go all the way. Oh, very cheeky. That wall got in the way between Pyrian and Abadage. 
We are going to see another replay. This time, Arperian's attempt ah. to stop the Baron. Yeah, here we go. Perian's stuck in here, but really it's the two-shot barrage once Ezreal does respawn. Oh yeah, show me it all the way. That's just a clean snipe right there. Let me see some T-Tours in chat, because that's the first death upset ever had on Bane. It gets KS from Sakurai. <laughs> he used his flash for that. <sighs> Thank you so much, Production Team, for having fun with that one. First and only ever behind. death for upset. Here comes Selfmade. That's a fantastic prison. Oh. That's a fantastic true shot barrage. Oh, Shulka routed and wrecked. Upset's running for his life. This will be his second ever death in his second ever vein game. SK's comp, you have to pick the right fights, and that was the perfect fight. Abadagi was still stuck in the mid lane. They had the teleport from Pyrian behind and set it up beautifully. Go jump on Twitter and go hashtag Wombo Combo for that one. Everybody was bunched up. Everybody was crushed. All right, one more look here. It's self-made on the flank, using that ultimate to catch out Ojo, who is such a star in the last team fight win for Shaka. There's just nowhere these guys can go. Oh man, the double stack on the Freljord ultimate. Braun from south north, and Sedge coming north south. I mean, Abadage couldn't even get involved. Look, it's a good team fight for SK, but they are still behind. They are still in trouble and they still need to claim back some territory. But look at the vision. They've got a deep ward in the uh, red buff of Shalka and they're pushing some dragon vision for the next Drake. That's going to be the Mound Drake coming up. SK already have one of those, but the second Baron feels like it will be the turning point for this game because if it does go into the hands of Shalka, that should be the tool for them to break open the base and close this one out. But if SK can get it themselves, all of a sudden, remember, they have very strong solo lane tools to try and push with that. All right, Mountain Drake has just spawned. SK have started it. I was going to ask if it was the right call because every time SK have gone to Dragon, it hasn't really gone very well. Uh, this time it's been donated. And there will still be one more elemental infernal before we get to Elder. So very, very juicy dragons to fight over at this stage of the game. Question I have for you, is it enough for SK? You know, Baron is going to be so crucial, especially with the very low range composition on Shalka. They, they can really help or use that Baron to push. And as it stands, actually, they're defending. Sakura is going all the way to the bot lane. His teleport will be up in a moment or two. Yeah, right now, Shaka have the control in the mid lane, but it was SK playing on the offensive, pushing up. And you can see, I think, one of the best tools SK are using right now is self-made over to the sides. You know, when he throws that ultimate out from the Foghorn, doesn't give time for a Shaka player to react to it. That's where you can find that snap engage, that immediate burst in a team fight win. I'm waiting for it to happen. Upsets drop very, very Whoa. low. Look at the heal. Dreams goes all the way forward. Won't be able to do it, but the tower is secured. Four towers to four. This gold difference is insignificant at this stage of the game. And Sakura is going to back away. He's just picked up his Guardian Angel as well. So, you know, Infernal Drake is three and a half minutes away. Baron is 40 seconds away. Vision is pretty weak, really, for both teams around that objective, which is why Shalka now pushing in. And I think it's so clear that Shalka want to prioritize this Baron. Uh, and try use that to unlock the victory. Absolutely, I think Shalka looking for a team fight around this objective using the Trundle plus Thresh combo. I love that you brought it up because it is a strong siege tool, but also in these situations where SK have to go through very tight corridors to get into the river from this blue side jungle, that means you throw down that pillar. It's very hard for them to walk through, and if they do, it means skill shots are going to be very, very easy. So it has to be something they look out for. Yeah, definitely the case. Ignaz almost caught out. He's forced to flash, actually. Could that be influential in the team fight? True Shot Barrage was thrown, didn't get used, and if the Baron fight happens, no Brawl Multi. Yeah, SK have to fully commit to this. They need to get the teleport out of Abadog. He's currently pushing down bottling, getting that tower. SK know they must stay on this. All right, Perian has got himself a hijack box, which he has just used. Level 15, one away from Max on the ulti. There's a peel back from the Baron. It's down to 3,000 HP. Abadog joins the fight. And Drake wants to go in. That's going to be the Subjugate stealing the stats of Socrate. The Baron is regenning. They throw down the pillar to try and slow him down. This is a win for SK Gaming. Yes, they lost the bottom tower, but they got the teleport outside one of the split pushes. Right now, though, Shalka have control. They have first dibs on walking mid lane, so SK still feel pressure to stay on this Baron buff, and Shalka can make a move. All right, Braum's ultimate's backup available. Self-made, where's the prison? He's thrown it! Oh, He's hit on Upset's down! He's caught out! Bevel, Vanguard's edge has been thrown out two directions. One from Pyrian, one from Odo, but this is a fight that's going very long. That's a flash forward. GA's been popped from Sakre. He's gonna get 
in, up, off the ground, but Crouchart remains untouched. Crouchart can keep chasing down. He's waiting on the cooldowns, trying to find that final snipe. Instead, it will just be the push up mid lane. SK could maybe move back. SK Gaming are not out of this game. They are finding their team fights, and now they're starting off the barrier. Yeah, Teleport comes in there from Sakuri. Again, they have no jungler, but Trick is missing his flash. If he wants to enter this pit, it's very easy to turn, but a Teleport behind could oh, change things. Oh my word, Odo One is going to be coming in as well. This is a 2v3. Crown Shot has gone forward with the Arcane no Shift. With his bite, doesn't do anything, but that's damage and a dash forward from Odo. Baron was enlisted by SK Gaming. They get a double, and now the Baron. Crown Shot just jumping in melee. He doesn't even care. He has the damage to win out in these fights. They're just going to body block to deny a hook steal. SK on top. This is a battle for German organization supremacy. It's something I talked about in the spring split. I love seeing SK and Schalke go toe to toe, and I was ready to say Schalke would win the game. I felt like they'd have been in control for such a long time. But all credit to SK finding the team fights around crucial objectives to bring them back into the lead. Right, it's self made finding these engages with those clutch ultimates, but it's Crown Shot dealing all the damage. Look at the itemization now. He's gone all in towards that hybrid AP style build, finishing off the Luden's Echo. So he has 40% CDR. On top of that, the Gunblade too for sustain. You can see the damage it alone speaks for itself. It really does. And I'm not saying it was very super damage, just below 9,000, but in comparison, to upsets 270 who unfortunately got picked off right so this isn't exactly a fair, fair comparison i mean 270 is not a whole lot trap it is not but uh, he was the him going down was the reason that sk could win that entire fight what do you make of this hybrid build well answer that in a moment or two if you look at the minimap Pyrian's down the bottom lane Baron empowered minions from SK. This is going to be a realm of from Shelka. They, they're going for the base. Yeah, they just want the towers. They don't even have the Baron, but they don't care. SK were moving over towards that Infernal Drake. The tower goes down, but they might be stuck in the base and forced into a 5v5. Fight, fight, fight! Pyrian teleports in from behind the Raptor camp. There goes the engage, waiting for the prison. Not going to do enough just yet. That's a lot of damage and upset. He's running for his life right now. It's a fight on two fronts. The first victim is going to be self-made. It is traded for Oda Wamne. The inhibitor still stands. SK has stood oh. Oh, but there's a hijack. Stolen Realm Wolf! Stolen Realm Wolf! And SK Gaming due to Shulka! What's been done to them? They are winning fight after fight thanks to Realm Wolf! Ground shot goes legendary. They're looking for the ace of Abadagi, the only member to survive. And remember, SK Gaming, they have the Baron buff. They're teleporting top lane. They want to push. That is the coolest hijack Realm Wolf I have ever seen. And with 35 second death timers, how much of the base can SK take? Oh, they're looking for at least one inhibitor, but a push up mid lane should mean two for this squad. Double Mountain Drakes as well, and only a rise to defend. They might just make the call to go for the win. They're going to try. Keep an eye on those death timers. 10 seconds for Odo, 15 for Trick, 15 for Upset. Abadage is left inside his own Nexus alone. Baron empowered minions for another minute. Abadage throws out the overload the wrong direction. Not going to be enough. He gets jumped on by Crown Shot. The Nexus is being focused. The Nexus is being chunked down. SK Gaming are looking for the win. SK Gaming take down Shulka. Holy moly, what a ride! SK Gaming, I mean, they looked like they were down the entire time, but it just took a few clutch team fights around the Baron and then calling the 5v5 when Shulka went for the base rush. And they came out wildly on top. Man, what a fun game to watch. The, the, the ebb and flow of control, and despite self-made, not having the impact he maybe wanted. He got flashes, don't get me wrong. His, his ganks were pretty effective in the early stages. His ultimates late game were just game changing. Yeah, I thought the way he just sort of, uh, uh, he hid in the fog of war, right? And used those ultimates to catch people very off guard. But then it also came down to crown shot, snowballing on this as you'll have to having a rough early game where he got pushed in. Upset, remember, was 4-0-2 at yep. one point. But I remember one key ultimate from that Ezreal that sniped out Upset, that got a massive shutdown for him, you know, stalled out some of the Baron, and that was a big turning point, I think, for Crown Shot. And it's a big turning point in my own mind, because I said the exact words, I have more faith in Upset's vein than in Crown Shot's Ezreal. 
I have to eat humble pie after watching the last 20 minutes of that game. Uh, we do actually have the final team fight for you, and hopefully this will end with that hijack realm war. Yeah, and I think this is a battle of 280 carries. Who can survive longer? Because Upset gets dove on and taken down very low. Odo tries to do the same thing on towards Crown Shot, but he has the sustain of the Gunblade and is landing all of his skill shots. You can see Abadage getting blown oh. to pieces. And then the last second steal of realm war before Abadage walks out of vision means it's three more kills in the game for SK. Ironically, the Pillar of Ice may have helped Shelka. <laughs> because SK, sorry, may have helped it because it actually prevented them stepping outside that realm warp. And I am just going to say it one more time. Crown Shot, I owe you an apology. I did not think you were going to pull off that level of Ezreal performance. 36.5k to 16. I happily eat my words. And let's be real here, Crown Shot is a very strong Ezreal player. Again, in Spring Split's most played champion, yeah. he went to that time and time again. But it was interesting because we felt like his transition as a player came when he started moving more towards those crit AD carries, yes. those hyperscaling carries. But uh, it turns out he played Ezreal like a hyperscaling AD carry and popped I, off. I also remember Crown Shot's Ezreal in playoffs, and it led me to believe what I believe today. Now I'm questioning those beliefs. Uh, you guys at home, key player of the game at LOL Esports on Twitter. The three uh, players you can pick from, Sacre, Selfmade, and Crown Shot. And it's actually a, a challenging one because Sacre definitely had a strong performance as one of the younger players on the stage as well. But for me, it's between Selfmade and Crown Shot, and I think I'd be happy no matter who. Yeah, it depends if you value the person who throws their body into the yeah. fight and engages or the one that does all the damage. Really a, a coin flip for me. Yeah, it absolutely is the case. And I definitely felt the engage players earlier in the day was uh, where my vote would be going. So I, I think I might have to do the same today. I think self-made, uh, after all the questions and all the discussions, that's probably what I have to go. See, you're going self-made. See, I, I, I would lean crown shot. See, I think we're just, we, we're on different pages, you know? That's, and that's fine. Perspective. Yeah, one of us is right, one of us is wrong. So very, very exciting game. After the break, Vitality's coach, Yamato Kano, will give us some more insight before his team looks to bounce back from, from yesterday's loss. We'll see you in a few minutes. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Oh, SK Gaming, they've stepped all the way forward, but that Fang Gods are just fantastic from Odo One Day. It's oh, we got him. So many. All of a sudden, Croucher is already dead. They've already traded one for one, though, as now self -made goes further. The Realm Warp used again. Here comes self -made. That's a fantastic prison. Oh. That's a fantastic true shot barrage. Oh, Shulka are routed and wrecked. Crown Shot has gone forward with the Arcane Shift. Winter's Bite doesn't do anything, but that's damage. And a dash forward from Odo. Baron was enlisted by SK Gaming. But there's a hijack. Stolen Realm Warp. Stolen Realm Warp. And SK Gaming due to Shulka. What's been done to them? They are winning fight after fight thanks to Realm Warp. Abadagi throws out the overload the wrong direction. Not going to be enough. He gets jumped on by Crown Shot. The Nexus is being focused. The Nexus is being chunked down. SK Gaming looking for the win. SK Gaming take down Shulka. Welcome to ProView. Exclusive POV streams for every player in every game let you get closer to the action and get inside their minds. With MultiView, you can create your very own stream, unique to you, with up to four feeds. And with our advanced timeline, you can hone in on all the big plays that matter most to you. Watch LEC in a whole new way for €14.99 or get the All Access Pass for €19.99.